Okay, hello, and welcome to Mythophiles, where we love all manner of stories. I am Duncan Gale. I am Cody Decker. And today we are going to be talking about the novel Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. So, um, I guess uh, Catch-22 is... uh, a novel, yeah, so written by Joseph Heller, came out in 1961, uh, and it uh, takes place during the uh, Second World War. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I guess that's just the main thing to mention right now. So um, yeah, why? and this was, this was a novel that I chose, um, and um the reason why I chose this was uh, the only reason why I uh, choose a lot of things that I read and that uh, this was just something that was on my uh, bookshelf for uh, quite a while. Um, I actually, I, I mean, it's, I mean, you can see, you might be able to tell this is a somewhat dog-eared copy and I got it this way. And I mean, I think it's, I think it's been on my shelf for maybe maybe close to 20 years at this point. I mean, I, 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 I like literally can't remember when I got it. Um, but uh, it's one of those books that, uh, you know, I've perceived as like, if not necessarily one of the best novels ever written, at least like one of the like best American novels of the 20th century, something like that. It always gets uh, mentioned in those sorts of lists. And it also sounded like a novel that would be somewhat funny, uh, that would be be entertaining uh, to read. And so, uh, so yeah, basically, altogether, those are the those are the reasons why I chose uh, the novel. Whether it whether it turns out to be any of those things, I mean that that will uh, be revealed in the subsequent discussion. But um, so that's just sort of my general background rationale for choosing this. Uh, so, Cody, any uh, any um initial impressions i know the phrase and mm-hmm. i was and i knew this was like oh this is a respected book so it'll be nice to like actually go through it and find out the true meaning of the phrase because right, right. at the time i knew it just meaning um oh you can't do that basically is what a catch-22 right, means right, you right. can't do something because of something else um, right, right. so it, it was nice to get uh that context and there were parts that made me laugh and I would tell people jokes, yeah. but I would also tell them I'm not recommending this exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because I have a friend who who's deep into classic books. He wants to get into them. Um, so I was like, oh yeah, I read this and here's one joke that I liked from it. And he was like, you know, I got the book and it, I didn't like it that much. So I didn't tell you to get it. I told you a joke from it. <laughs> It's a very fine distinction because there's a lot of highlights in it, but I had I, I had a lot of feelings about the book going through it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, might as well just mention, yeah, to sort of give our viewers a peek behind the curtain here. Yeah, I mean, I think this was a book that we had been planning on doing uh, a couple of weeks ago. And it was one of those deals where, you know, as as often happens with this with this podcast, you know, I I didn't have too much time to read it, but I thought, hey, you know, this is going to be an easy breezy read. Uh, so, you know, I started reading it and, uh, you know, with the intention of getting it done in like maybe three or four days and uh, <laughs> very, very quickly ended up uh, and in, in, into it. I was like, oh, no, this is this, this, this is not going to be happening. And uh, yeah, I think that was why I. Uh, I switched it to uh, the Island of Dr. Moreau uh, a couple of weeks back that we read, which is a much, much shorter, much uh, easier read. Uh, but um, yeah, I think what I will say about this book is that, um, yeah, it is, it is challenging uh, to get through. It is uh, not a, um, not a conventional uh, novel in terms of, in terms of story and stuff, but if it's, the sort of thing that uh, that you are interested in, I think it is worth trying to get through. Um, yeah, if there are certain things you find intriguing about the themes and so forth. I mean, um, so I have never um, 
I, I mean, this, this will probably come as a big surprise to people, but uh, I have never served in the military myself. Um, Cody, have you, have, have, have you ever served in the military? No, I stopped after modern warfare too. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, if any of our viewers or listeners uh, have served in the military, uh, you know, we, we uh, salute you. Yeah. We have nothing but respect for that. Um, and uh, you may uh, relate to uh, certain certain uh, themes that are in this novel, and yeah, and they might be a little more resonant for you than they are for for those of us who who don't have a military background. So uh, yeah, I will just sort of mention that at the uh, at the outset as as something that you know. There, there, there might be a lot more truth in, in this novel than than we know of just from our own uh, personal experience. But uh, but yeah, uh, but, any other. Uh, yeah, go ahead. which just for the record, I did think it was funny. And like at the midway point is when I realized like, oh, this is like a very casually funny sitcom right. about the bureaucracy of war. Right. And it would be perfect for a TV show, which I watched, which. Yeah. For minor uh, reveals about that, they toned down the comedy of it and they made it much more serious. Uh, right, right. Mm -hmm. They made a, a movie that um, seemed in a, like I was watching it, I'm like, I think this is fine. I'm not like yeah. upset, but I, this just feels very empty. Um, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely, yeah, towards the end, yeah, we'll get into the, uh, into the adaptations, which are, which are interesting. But yeah, um, yeah. In terms of yeah, talking about it as a as a sitcom, yeah. I mean, this is very much. I mean, I haven't I haven't watched a lot of the show, but I've watched a little bit of Mash, and uh, yeah, I think there's aspects of this that are a little bit like like the classic TV show Mash. Um, it's sort of like Mash plus Kafka. It's like a Kafka esque Mash. Um, so that that makes it you know a little bit a little bit darker um a little bit more uh cynical uh in some ways but uh but yeah it's got that got that basic kind of feel to it i would say yeah. and uh i also know a bit of trivia is it was not that popular when it first came out especially because it was anti-war right yeah yeah definitely. and i you know and this was during world war ii which you know there's a lot there's a lot of ambiguity there no one's saying who was right or who was wrong during world war ii but um is the, that is is that right <laughs> i'm pretty sure i got my i got my I, ears to the ground uh with the people. i feel I, I feel like that was the last war where where we where we're all pretty sure about things <laughs> i don't know no i think <laughs> people are still i mean it's still talked about to this day you know sure yeah oh, so, oh yeah definitely definitely yeah, yeah i mean no one talks about like the Roman wars, because everyone agrees those were right, but um well that's true. Yeah. I mean the uh the first and second Punic War. Yeah. I mean actually the, the there's no uh, <laughs> oh I've 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 listened to an entire 140 episode podcast about the history of Rome. If if we if we if if we want to get into that. Right? <laughs> Probably my favorite thing is I can just sort of vaguely say things you're like, ah yes. The <laughs> Hey, I'm the um, I, I'm yeah, this generation's uh, Dennis Miller, uh, <laughs> but without the uh, problematic political views. Um, yet, yeah. um, yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But it because it, it is like no one's happy, and it's not a um, look how great war is thing. And that's actually right. pretty recent in culture for us to be like, uh, you know, remember Vietnam? Mm -hmm. uh, there was like a whole battle in culture about like war. So, um, as years went on, it I get uh, that's what the trivia I was reading was just saying that like it got more and more respect as like people agreed with it a little more. Oh, sure, sure, yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, that definitely seems to be the case, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I guess, um, go ahead and get uh, a little bit into the uh, background of this book. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this was written by uh, Joseph Heller. Um, who was born in 1923, died 1999. Um, and uh, as 
it's probably not surprising. Yeah, um, Joseph Heller, yeah, born in born in New York. Uh, he did serve in the in the Second World War uh, in the in the Air Force, and yeah, some of this uh, novel is uh, somewhat based on his experiences. Although from what I read, it sounds like his experiences were actually not nearly as bad or traumatizing as uh, the characters in in uh, this book. Um, yeah, but uh, well, and that's like because uh -huh. I, I, I mean, you hear like people now, like I know people that join the military, and it's like unless you're stationed in like certain areas, right. there are it, it is a lot of like, oh, uh, like we kind of just got nothing to do for some right. people. So it is like it's honestly a really good setup for a sitcom because it's like, sure, interesting situations happen, but then most of the time you are just like on base right right mm -hmm. and even and this was during world war ii right and then, and then so like if you if you modernized it mm -hmm. i think you, you you could have it be a, i mean you'd also have to have it not in certain places but you could make it a little more lighthearted. Mm -hmm. right you could make it like the yeah. office like 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 the what the office oh the office yeah yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, well, yeah, yeah, it is worth pointing out. Yeah, one, one more thing. Yeah, there, there, there was a, uh, there was a sitcom that was set in a uh, World War II uh, POW camp, uh, Hogan Zeros, uh, which is, which is kind of, kind of infamous as a, as a sort of like, people look back on it as sort of a sitcom in bad taste a little bit, but it was, it was actually very, very popular at the time that it came out. I uh, I didn't know that was I've heard the name I didn't know that's where it took place. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I mean it's a it's a uh, POW camp with a bunch of American soldiers. Yeah, who were playing all these wacky pranks on the German colonel uh, and and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Speaking of colonels, um, uh -huh. now I did audio book for this, and the audio guy his he had a really good voice for it, and I thought <laughs> his performances sometimes were better in some adaptions I'd seen. Mm -hmm. um but if i he, every time like midway through hearing the words colonel corn and colonel cathright uh started like just triggering me and i just like how many times i i heard those names i didn't get yeah. the joke of colonel corn at first because i'm like and then i get it and i'm like oh colonel like corn is in kernels and i'm like that's funny oh wow that's and good then, yeah 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 i actually didn't even get that joke yeah i, I mean i mean I, I i read it uh as as a book but yeah probably as uh listening to it through audio yeah that joke comes through more yeah, yeah so i was like oh that's a, it's uh, like oh but then it's like that joke is now going to be said throughout the rest yeah. of this book <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So, 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 yeah. Let me just, uh, yeah, do a little more of the background. But yeah, we'll definitely get into the the names <laughs> and the the repetition of jokes. That's a big, that's a big thing in this book. That mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> may may present some some problems. But um, so yeah, um, so yeah, Joseph Heller. Yeah, he um, he he served in the Second World War. Yeah, and according to his own, um, yeah, kind of experience yeah most of the um sort of missions that he flew were milk runs uh and and there are references to milk runs in this book which are basically just relatively easy missions that's that's what the uh what the term is in the military for those uh so so basically um it's it's interesting because although he served in the second world war doing the same basic kind of thing as these characters it also seems like this book is not necessarily really based on his his experience. Like, I mean, there's there's a way in which when you read this, you think, OK, this is the result of somebody who's who was really kind of shell shocked and, and traumatized. But apparently he didn't really have that experience in the Second World War and he he didn't have any problems with it as a war. Uh, but he only started sort of writing a writing this book in kind of the mid 50s and by that point that was when the korean war was going on so so actually uh it seems like a lot of what he's talking about in this book was more informed by stuff that was going on during the korean war mm. which also connects it to, to mash uh again um and then yeah the book was 
uh, yeah, it, it took him a long time to, to write the book. It wasn't published until 1961. And then, and, and yeah, and as you mentioned, it wasn't very popular then, but it kind of slowly became popular uh, with a lot of college students in the later, in the later 60s. And yeah, and people were reading the book uh, uh, as the Vietnam War was going on and going on and it became a lot more resonant. So it's a, so it's a strange thing where, yeah, this book takes place during World War II, but it was written during the Korean War and really only became popular as the Vietnam War was going on. Um, so it's a lot of kind of, uh, different things, uh, going on with that. Um, so yeah, um, this was, this was the first novel that, uh, Joseph Heller wrote and is by far his most famous novel. Uh, he wrote, he wrote a, a number of other novels, including, uh, a novel called Closing Time, which is actually the sequel to this novel. And I so heard there was a sequel. Yeah, yeah. So, so there is a sequel to this novel, um, which, yeah, sort of picks up. Yeah, I mean, the not that that didn't come out until the '90s, and yeah, and it and it uh, basically picks up with the character of uh, Yosarian when he's uh, much older and he's still sort of uh, obsessed with his own mortality, but it's it's much more about disease and so forth and the ravages of old old age that he's he's dealing with in that. Um, but yeah, so. So yeah, that's just a little bit of uh, background about the author and how the novel was written and everything. Uh, With the um, mentioning that it was it came out during the Vietnam era, because the um, yeah. one of the things is like who they're attacking is is like I don't know if like this is like this isn't like a um, and it, it becomes one of the more like serious dramatic moments, which is is like these are just like people were attacking, right? This isn't like a, you know these are locals. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're, we're so, uh, in the context of Vietnam, that makes, that fits for a theme. Right. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. This well, yeah, place yeah, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's the, yeah, that's another interesting thing about the novel. Yeah. So that, I mean, it's the second world war, but they're stationed in Italy. Yeah. And so this is mostly about the, the Italian theater, the second world war, which is one that. Yeah, I mean, at least for me personally, yeah, I kind of, I kind of don't really think of that very much. Like, oh yeah, we were also fighting Italians <laughs> in the Second World War. I mean, that's it. Kind of, kind of almost feels weird. Uh, that that's I, what, I, mean, I mean, yeah. When you're learning about World War Two, and this is like, okay. and the Italians were there were on the Axis side too. You know, they were right. doing stuff. What did they really? do? They're like, well, not much, but the... <laughs> right, right, yeah, they were kind of the. The junior partner to uh to to germany yeah but um but yeah so that's that's another kind of interesting aspect of this novel is that yeah it it seems things seem kind of low stakes sometimes because like you know there's just all these soldiers kind of goofing off uh at this place where they're stationed but then all of a sudden like the kind of reality of war hits you and they're these like sudden horrible things that happen um and yeah that i guess that's sort of like a way that joseph heller is kind of conveying what what the experience is like yeah so um okay, uh, okay. I've, I've seen that in a couple of military comedies which is mm -hmm. like uh you know everyone's like doing like crude humor and like jokey stuff right. and it, it, it is kind of like a, a college type environment right uh, right right but then it's also like oh yeah um your bunk mate's dead mm -hmm. uh yeah they just died yesterday right right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and uh in catch 22's case i think they're like but uh we can't remove him from the tent so right yeah that is one of many kind of yeah absurd uh absurd things that happens in the novel so um so okay i guess now we can just kind of get into the actual meat of the uh the novel itself um let's take off to uh, take off to story time and drop some bombs but he keeps yeah. on forgetting the work as eminem but then I realized I don't remember the rest of the song. The drop bombs, but it keeps on. Mom spaghetti, you know that one. 
No, 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 I don't know that song. Oh, who's, interesting. who's that? Eminem. Oh, that's Eminem. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's why I don't know it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I keep making music reference. I don't know. No, no, it's uh it's good. It's good. No, I mean that's uh I mean I mean I mean I hope people enjoy the the kind of interplay of this <laughs> of this podcast where we're continually making references to the other person does <laughs> And having to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's they get it. The other person gets it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, oh, if they don't get it, uh, we're just representing them. Right, right. But yes, the story of Catch 22. Yeah. World the War story II of Catch 22. Yo yeah. World War II. Yo yo. Yeah. Yo yo. Yeah. So so yeah, our uh, our main character, yeah, is uh is I believe he's Captain. Yosarian, yeah, who is a bombardier in the U.S. Air Force, and so as I as I mentioned a little earlier, yeah, this is um, this is a unique novel. So, so so yeah, Yosarian is like one of these characters where he's technically the main character because he's in it more than any other character, but there's a lot of other characters in here as well. Um, and um that's probably one of the most yeah i i would say there are two um there are two big challenges in reading this novel the first one is that it doesn't really have a uh, linear straightforward story okay it's not like this happens and then this happens and then the next chapter picks up where the last chapter uh, left off. It, it's not really quite like that. It's more sort of free associative. Um, it's more, it, I, if I had to kind of subs, uh, describe the uh, the overall structure of it, it's sort of like this thing that's going around and around where it's like, okay, uh, let's talk about this character for a little bit, then this character, then this character, and then let's go back and, hey, remember this character that that, that there was like a mention of a hundred pages ago and something that happened with them. Let's talk a little bit more about that now. And, and, and so it's kind of like these sort of inner, 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 uh, intersecting vignettes that are gradually kind of, um, fleshed out more and more as, as, as it goes on. So that's, that's something that, yeah, if you're not, if you're not used to it, that's a very kind of, uh, challenging thing about it. And, I mean, you really have to pay attention when you're reading or listening to this, or else you're going to get lost really quick. Which is so, why, oh, yeah, no, you can't binge it really. Um, no, no, I had to really. take frequent breaks because it is like a mini series, so I had to be like, okay, episode one, and then also each chapter is focused around like a bit of right. of satire. And mm -hmm. for audio, the narrator, the way he does it is it's like he's doing both parts and like that two man comedy show thing. So right, right. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's much more of like, like a who's on first, the way he delivers the lines. Yeah. Or they be like, um, I'm trying to think of one that's not racist, I can say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. There are a lot of there are a lot of Abbott and Costello esque sequences uh, in this uh, in the, in this novel. Yeah, and so some of them are more more successful uh, and, and and humorous than than others. But yeah, some of them are wildly slapstick, and th there's right. one uh, which is just uh, specifically like one of the military leaders. They're at like a, one of their trial things when someone's in trouble, and right. he and then he says. Um, read back that last line to me and then the person mm -hmm. goes read back that last line to me and he goes no right. you fool yeah, yeah, yeah. i said read the last and then it's, it just goes into an app which i thought was fun but i was mm -hmm. also like oh, oh yeah. this is wildly comedic mm -hmm. and then it will it will then either keep going in that direction or like oh by the and then or the big and here's a part where war is bad um, right, but that right. was generally the mood of it where you'll it'll be like gentle satire a big bit and then a right. little bit of story happens right oh yeah and 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 i did read that yeah yeah by the uh, way um joseph heller was actually friends with uh mel brooks and so uh that sort of makes sense because yeah there's a lot of uh stuff that, 
that is uh, reminiscent of of his movies in this. Um, so, so yeah, basically, yeah, the 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 novel doesn't quite follow a, a, a straightforward uh, narrative. Uh, that's that's one problem. The other the other major challenge of at least getting into this novel uh, at first, it, it becomes less of a challenge as, as, you, as you get into it, but is that there are tons of characters in this, uh, tons of named characters. And as you, as you, uh, yeah, I mean, this was at least my experience as I was reading it, it's like impossible to tell which characters are gonna be important and which ones are just, okay, this is just, you know, a, a kind of one-off character. And so this, this is actually what I did as I, as I uh, made my second attempt of, of reading this novel is that every time a new character was named, I circled them. And then I actually um, made a list of the new named characters at the end of every chapter. And so um, let me just give you an idea of what's, of, 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 of what we got going on here. So at the end of the first chapter, uh, there are, um, I think there are like eight, eight characters name, you know, not, not too bad. At the end of the second chapter, there are um, 10 more new characters <laughs> named. At the end of the third chapter, there are another 10 <laughs> characters named. And it kind of goes on that way for a while. And then eventually by like chapter t chapter 10 or, um, you know, 11, it's, it sort of dies down a little bit. And it's like, okay. And then, like all, all of a you know sudden again, there's like another chapter where another ten new characters are are, are named again. So, <laughs> you know that's as I mean you know I've read I've read a lot of and I, I mean I've I've read stuff like War and Peace, which I, I mean I mean War and Peace has like at least a hundred characters in it, but it, but it's it's like a fourteen hundred page book, so you know it's kind of spread out. But in this book, like. Yeah, within the first 50 or 60 pages, like there is literally like a new character named like every page, like, you know, and uh, it gets a little ridiculous after a while. But but you eventually sort of are able to see which characters are more important than others. But at, at the outset, it's very it's very tough to sort of wade into at the beginning. And so the yeah. names are usually um, silly uh mm -hmm. or like like just like how do i make like that like there's just like silly names there's milo right. minder binder yeah which mm -hmm. it's just stuff where when you say it out loud it's like right, that right. like especially like hearing it all the names and then um which by the way the guy who played milo in the hulu show i was like oh that's really good because because i was like i don't really know mm -hmm. anyone in this book but then when the show yeah. was like showing like all the characters and i'm like oh it's milo uh, mm -hmm. I was like, oh yeah, I, I do know the, I know how these people behave very thoroughly. Sure. Um, yeah. 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 Milo is definitely yeah one of the more one of the more memorable characters uh, in it, and uh, and the joke of his character is also probably the most complicated joke <laughs> in a book full of complicated jokes. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically, yeah. There's there, there's there's a lot of characters in this book, but, um, but yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Yossarian and... is is the main character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The setup is Yosarian is writing this, and the people know he's writing it because there's one character who says he doesn't want his name mentioned. So. Oh really? There's a character, I think it's a major or something, and in how the audiobook does it is they go, um, because he's like, don't use my name. So they go like, Colonel mm -hmm, Duchovny, something like that. Oh, that's actually, that, that, that's actually different from, 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 from what's in the book. Okay, okay, that might be something specific to the audiobook. Okay. Isn't there a character who like, it just shows like dashes? Oh yeah, yeah, there is, but 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 yeah, in the book it's just yeah, there's a dash and and then his. And, and then oh yeah, because because uh, that because okay. the the joke in the this is one of those things that I yeah, like because yeah, yeah. the joke in the book is like well you can't uh -huh. put my name so he just puts nothing but they're like well we have right. to make that communicate in audio, so right right right, so they had to yeah. go so yeah. they the guy goes mm -hmm, uh, instead of saying nothing, right right, sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. That's that, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, blank. 
Day Coverly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's the that's the character's name. I was thinking of David uh, Duchovny. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, Duchovny. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, as we mentioned, yeah, there are a lot of jokes in this book, and some of them are quite funny, but a lot of them sort of take a, a fairly uh, similar structure, which is that basically what this novel is, is about overall is just, it's about military bureaucracy and about how sort of absurd it is and how it kind of leads to all of these weird contradictions. If I had to kind of sum up the overall kind of message, and the, the, the sort of humorous message of this, I would say it's, it's probably something along those lines. Um, and they're, they're all setups right. for versions of the catch 22 right catch so it's right. a lot of people going through situations where like i can't do this unless this and because of this this and then you have people talk about it's it's kind of like a seinfeld bit where they a go a little bit uh, yeah mm -hmm. you can get fresh eggs yes i can get fresh eggs but only if you uh make me this so like you want me to and then eventually the scenes will sort of just end right, i don't right. hate i don't hate the bits i liked a lot of them oh, oh um, yeah but that yeah, is definitely. the the system of them yeah yeah very much so yeah i mean the novel opens with uh yosarian uh in a hospital and he has a pain in his liver and the way it's described is um uh, it says uh, the doctors were puzzled by the fact that it wasn't quite jaundice. If it became jaundice, they could treat it. If it didn't become jaundice and went away, they could j discharge him. But this just being short of jaundice all the time confused them. So that's just the first of uh, of many many jokes like that. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that's one thing. And then yeah. So obviously. The book is is titled Catch Twenty Two, and there's a uh, there's a specific uh, sort of reference made to that. Um, and yeah, as you mentioned, yeah, Catch Twenty Two is something that yeah yeah I, I think a lot of us are kind of familiar with already. We we've heard that expression, and reading this book will sort of give us a little more information about okay, well, what actually is Catch Twenty Two. And so this novel does tell you what Catch-22 is, but it it does it in, uh, you know, a very uh, sort of unsatisfying way. That sort in of which like, a, a, a character tells another character what it right. is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, in which basically just they say what it is, but, you know, in terms of like follow-up questions, you might have like, well, yeah, but like, why is it Catch-22? Like, what are Catches 1 through 21? Uh no, there's there, there there's no mention made of any of that. It's just Which I, catch twenty two. I did look that up, and from what I yeah. saw, there is no specific reason as twenty two. The number doesn't have a specific meaning. Uh, the well, author just right. thought that was a funny number. Well, wait, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's actually a fairly convoluted reason why why he chose twenty two. It was because oh. basically, basically, there were all of these other numbers that he wanted to use instead, but. <laughs> they were already being used for like the titles of other things. Mm. And so, and and so like the publisher didn't want the novel to be confused with like other stuff. And so, okay. Like, like, like I think it was maybe catch 17, but there was a movie coming out called Stalag 17 already. So they're like, no, no, don't use that. Okay. Well, and, and, and so, and so that's, that's how it, how it came to 22. That's gotta but be. yeah. Okay. The sheer frustration of essentially being given like password rules where they're like, no, we can't use right. that. 17 is taken this year right right 17's right. out and just being like 19 they're like no there's a there's something else using 19 mm -hmm. right right 20. yeah right <laughs> exactly so again that's what that's why it's specifically catch 22 but again that's that's an explanation that explains while not explaining because it's like okay well yeah but why why did you want to give it a number in the first place and why any one of those specific numbers that you wanted to give it in the first place but yeah anyway so. which it, it all fits into the grand you know the number 23 with jim carrey where he sees the number 23 everywhere yeah, this is yeah. catch 22 and you see catch 22 everywhere because he himself right. 
was stuck in a catch-22, even trying to get a name for it, which is uh, maybe not right now that I'm thinking about it, but we should probably explain what a catch-22 is. Right. Yeah. So, 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 so I have the, I I have the page in front of me. Yeah, this is, um, I mean, in this specific edition, it's on page 55. It's, it's in chapter five, uh, that, that, uh, the full explanation is given. And it was, um, there was only one catch and that was catch 22, which specified that a concern for one's own safety in the face of dangers that were real and immediate was the process of a rational mind or and that's that's a character or o r r mm. or was crazy and could be grounded all he had to do was ask and as soon as he did he would no longer be crazy and would have to fly more missions or would be crazy to fly more missions and sane if he didn't but if he was sane he had to fly them if he flew them, he was crazy and didn't have to. But if he didn't want to, he was sane and had to. Yossarian was moved very deeply by the absolute simplicity of this clause of Catch-22 and let out a respectful whistle. <laughs> That's some catch, that Catch-22, he observed. It's the best there is, Dr. Nika agreed. Yeah. So, And it's interesting, yeah, because, yeah, I watched the movie and I, I, I watched the first episode of the mini, miniseries. That... That scene, like verbatim, is is uh, uh, portrayed in in both the movie and the and the first episode of the series. So yeah, that's that's very very important. Yeah. Yeah, so. I mean, if you can't nail defining what the word is in the adaption, right, right. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised these days if they're mm-hmm. like, uh, we wanted to modernize the catch, what the meaning of catch twenty two is, and right. just being in theaters be like that's. In the book, it means something else. Right, uh, right. Yeah. So, so yeah, basically, yeah. So, so if you're crazy, then you're not allowed to fly the missions, but you have to then apply to actually be uh, exempted from flying them. But the act of applying to be exempted demonstrates that you're actually not crazy. So, yeah. Yeah, and so the reason uh-huh, right. the reason Catch Twenty Two is brought up is because Yosarian, the main guy, wants mm-hmm. to get out of flying missions, um, right? Because they're stuck in a position where uh, their guy in charge. I literally don't know military terms enough to say who that guy is, but right, that right. guy um, keeps raising the amount of flights they have to go on. So everyone's trying right. to get out, but every way to get out is always blocked by some other bureaucracy and Yosarian's trying to figure out s- some way so he can just go home. I think right, right. they mentioned in the show, at least, I don't know if it was mentioned in the book, but they're at the tail end of World War II. Or at the very least, they That's keep right. saying the Germans are leaving. Like, why are we even oh, yeah. still here? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I think this specifically takes place, I think, in like 1944. Yeah, which is which, yeah, towards towards the end. Yeah, and there are, um, yeah, they, there are definitely parts um, where Yosarian is actually trying to sort of just like wait it out, like like, like either uh, uh, be be basically uh, admitted into the hospital and just stay in the hospital until the war is over. And there's another scene where he is uh, going through uh, basic training, and he says that he specifically chose to be uh an, an air force uh pilot because that was the most difficult job and required the most training and so he figured well yeah hopefully yeah the uh the, the training takes so long that that the war will be over before i'm before i'm done yeah so so yeah that's that's another way that he's sort of trying to get out of things but yeah so uh, uh so yeah i mean yosarian obviously the, the the main character but yeah yeah i mean there's a couple of other characters there's uh milo minderbinder uh who um is another uh soldier uh pretty much on yosarian's level and um he is um in addition to being a soldier he is also basically kind of running this uh extremely complicated uh syndicate si- syndicate uh where he is basically uh yeah yeah i think milo is technically he's the he's the cook uh 
in the in the in the mess hall, but he is also supplying all of the food for the mess hall, and he is doing it through this elaborate process where he like buys the food one place and then he sells it uh, to another country and then buys it back and is able to like make a profit in that way. And and so basically he's he's sort of like uh, I, I mean I th I think Milo is probably the character is kind of meant to sort of. Uh, be a commentary on war profiteers and the way in mm. which people make like tons of money uh, while, while, while wars are going on. And uh, yeah, and basically, um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's his character. Yeah. I mean, there's, um, yeah, and then kind of, kind of the main, I would say villain of, of the novel is uh, yeah. The character of uh, Colonel Cathcart, who is uh, yeah. The sort of uh, commanding officer of Yossarian, yeah, who who keeps uh, raising the number of missions that is required in order for a soldier to be uh, basically allowed to go back home. Um, and to, so to like impress his superiors who, for what I know, don't care that much that he's right. that they're even doing that. But he's like, if I keep raising the missions, I'll get a promotion. Right. And I'll be known as the, and he starts like losing his mind with it as the story goes on. He gets more and more devoted to this idea of like, right, right. instead of 65, it'll be 70. And then it just like, uh, he's getting like addicted to raising the numbers. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah, and actually, yeah, here's, here's another passage I'd like to read. This is, um, from, uh, chapter 19 and this is the chapter about Colonel Cathcart specifically. Um, and uh, yeah, so what it says here, uh, yeah, Colonel Cathcart was a slick, successful, slipshod, unhappy man of 36 who lumbered when he walked and wanted to be a general. He was dashing and dejected, poised and chagrined. He was complacent and insecure, daring in, in, the, in the administrative stratagems he employed to bring himself to the attention of his superiors and craven in his concern that his schemes might all backfire. He was handsome and unattractive, a swashbuckling, beefy, conceited man who was putting on fat and was tormented chronically by prolonged seizures of apprehension. Colonel Cathcart was conceited because he was a full colonel with a combat command at the age of only 36. And Colonel Cathcart was dejected because although he was only, because, although he was already 36, he was still only a full colonel. Colonel Cathcart was impervious to absolutes. He could measure his own progress only in relationship to others. And his idea of excellence was to do something at least as well as all the other, as all the men his own age who were doing the same thing even better. So that's uh, yeah, just one of uh, the sort of more compact descriptions, I think, uh, yeah, that we that sometimes is... get. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. But ju just like how you will get like a breakdown of a character right, before right. you meet them. Yeah, you'll get like a oh this is this guy he uh and it's and it, it's also like with Colonel Cathcart it's like there's a moral there for it's like oh this is the kind of guy that's like this you're like okay don't be like don't be like Colonel Cathcart because mm -hmm. he's right, making right. everyone's lives miserable because he's living up to other standards mm -hmm. that uh, just aren't reasonable. Right, right, yeah, and the. The, those sorts of paradoxical formulations that were in that description. Yeah. Again, that's, that's all over this novel. I mean, it, it's, it's in the very beginning again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The scene where Yossarian is in the hospital and there's the character of the, of the Texan. And they say, yeah, the Texan was, was, was totally charming and uh, carefree. Every, everybody hated him. You know? so, <laughs> so was, there's, there's just stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, throughout. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Let me just let me just read. Yeah, at least one more uh, thing. Yeah, this is uh, we 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 were we, we were talking about Milo earlier and about how complicated the joke is around Milo and <laughs> yeah. and, and, and and so here here's actually kind of like maybe that maybe the closest thing to a clear explanation of, of what's going on. Um, so. Yeah, uh, and this starts with Yossarian talking to Milo, and Yossarian says, I don't understand why you buy eggs for seven cents a piece in Malta and sell them for five cents. I do it to make a profit. But how can you make a profit 
you lose two cents an egg. But I make a profit of three and a quarter cents an egg by selling them for four and a quarter cents an egg to the people in Malta. I buy them from for seven cents an egg. Of course, I don't make the profit. The syndicate makes the profit and everybody has a share. Yosari and Feldy was beginning to understand. And the people you sell the eggs to at four and a quarter cents a piece make a profit of two and three quarter cents a piece when they sell them back to you at seven cents a piece. Is that right? <laughs> Why don't you sell the eggs directly to you and eliminate the people you buy them from? Because I'm the people I buy them from, Milo explained. <laughs> I make a profit of three and a quarter cents a piece when I sell them to me and a profit of two and three quarter cents a piece when I buy them back from me. That's a total profit of six cents an egg. I lose only two cents an egg when I sell them to the mess halls at five cents a piece. And that's how I can make a profit buying eggs for seven cents a piece and selling them for five cents a piece. So, again, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of the most complicated jokes I've ever <laughs> kind of encountered in anything. Um, and and that's one of his more yeah. simple. That's like one of the starter schemes. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, and, and then it goes on where, yeah, it turns out that like Milo is actually like the mayor of this <laughs> of this city in Italy, and he's also like the Shah of Iran, and 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 and, and, and like 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 he actually has all these like high ranking uh, political positions, and and then it's and and he and there are, there are certain places in Africa where he when, when he goes there he is uh, worshipped as a rain god or something. So so so, so like basically it's just kind of like yeah um, increases uh, from there, and so yeah I I, I mean I. I did admire a lot of the sort of heightening of of jokes throughout the novel here, and uh, yeah, yeah. And again, you have to really be paying attention you know, <laughs> because, again, you know, there's there, there's a lot of stuff in here where it's it 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 will like return to something that was only like mentioned offhandedly like a hundred pages uh, before, and, and and a lot of times, yeah, there's like a setup and then a punchline much later. Uh, so that's yeah one of many um sometimes they do, yeah. there'll be setups and the payoff for it is dramatic too um right and because as as the story starts ending some dramatic stuff starts happening um right particularly yeah. the i never pay for it that was one of the uh yeah 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 one of the one of the characters yeah yeah the uh the interplay that the characters have with the with the prostitutes in rome and their their interactions with them yeah yeah it becomes very dark yeah 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 to, yeah towards the end of the novel yeah uh a lot of the characters start start dying um and uh yeah and at the last quarter a new joke pops up that is extremely comical and whimsical uh -huh. And it was my favorite bit in the entire book. And mm -hmm. it is one of the biggest selling points for me to like tell people why you should is it's, it's also the mm -hmm. last line of the book where, where it like, it happens again. And, uh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. So, so how about, um, yeah, if, if you have any, if, if you have any comments to read, uh, we can do that and then we can, we can wrap things up with the stuff towards the Which end. Which I'll tell you, we don't have much in the way of comments, but you know what we okay. do have? Discord comments, because okay. try well, as I might, we do have a Discord. And instead of commenting on YouTube, people go on the Discord, which I'm on. Uh, and then I tell him, he knows everything because I tell him. <laughs> and one of the things is people can leave reviews for books. And one of our long time boys will he just started the john dies at the end series based off us talking about it in one of our episodes um cool. mm -hmm. so he, i'm just gonna go ahead and read one of his reviews and now okay. this is a new thing i'm gonna read off of um finished john dies at the end and it was amazing love the explanation for everything and the twists were all really good didn't feel like any of the build-up ever fell flat just fun all around uh so I read those. I love them because uh, yeah, John Dies at the End is one of my favorite books. I agree. It's a okay. big payoff story in which the mm -hmm. movie leaves out the big payoff at the end. Um, oh, really? Wow. Like the entire, um, like there's like a huge reveal for the book that they were at the end. And you're like, oh my God, that's not in the movie. And mm. uh, 
it was like, oh, yeah. that that like that was the foundation for the entire story. And they oh, removed. That's weird. So huh. you can only find out about it through the book. So I, I, I if you like the movie, check out the book because it's way better. Okay. Okay. Did you read John cool. Dies at cool. the end? No, no, I haven't. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely, definitely heard of it. Yeah, yeah, and I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie has like Paul Giamatti in it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the author, yeah. I mean, the author's attitude towards the adaption, because uh, he talks about, it and he's just like, I am just extremely lucky. Because he was like, it would work better as a TV series. Like, you can't really right. do what's in a book in a movie, right? Um, but he was also like, I am extremely lucky. I got an adaption because there's millions of authors that are much more popular than him who just have not had anything mm-hmm. adapted right right Which yeah is yeah kind of also one of those ways very subtle ways for someone to say that they're not that happy with how things happened where they say right. that they're lucky it happened at all mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well yeah it's interesting yeah uh, yeah yeah that is that is a telling uh comment um yeah i mean well, one of the authors we we covered recently, Kurt Vonnegut, uh, you know, maybe maybe at some point we can come back to him and read his World War II novel, Slaughterhouse Five, which has a uh, has a movie adaptation that he actually really liked. And again, and that's yeah, one of the like very rare cases of yeah yeah you you, you hear an author uh, that that actually really liked their their film what adaptation. People... Because, you know, people sing as they're like, uh, oh, the story was better in your head. That's why you don't like the movie. And it's like, you know, I didn't make up right. the story. The It was in the book. Mm-hmm. It wasn't in my head. Um, so what do right. they tell the author when he's like, I didn't like that movie? Are they like, uh, well, it was better. In, the story was better in your head when you wrote it. Right, right. Well, yeah, yeah. And I think the most extreme um, version of that was... Uh, yeah, the uh, the movie version of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, um, and that that novel was written by Ken Kesey, and uh, I think somebody asked Ken Kesey if he had seen the, if he had seen the movie of it, and I, I think his response was something like, um, "If a bunch of guys are uh, are out in your yard uh, raping your daughter, would you go out and watch it?" And so that's. Uh, that's basically what he thought of the of the film adaptation of his of his novel. Yeah, um, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's a pretty it's a pretty dark joke, but uh, the interviewer just thought, goes like, uh, "I thought it was worth mm, it." Yeah, the interviewer just no. Yeah. Like, yeah. I yeah, I didn't watch the movie. <laughs> right, <laughs> just right. like so, you didn't watch it. Yeah, yeah. The you know what's funny? The guy who made Crash Bandicoot said the same thing. Uh uh-huh. uh-huh. He was there because you know I don't know really? if you're familiar with the works of Crash Bandicoot. I mean, I know it's a video game, but but wait, is it is it based off of like something else initially? No, so it you know it's like those platformer okay. games, and eventually they just yeah. sold the rights yeah. to it so they can go do other. Oh, stuff. I see. Okay, yeah. And then they were and it, it, the series, you know, because they were also like we're done with this, so the story was done. With this story, mm-hmm. you're a Bandicoot, you fight a guy. Um, but they're like, we're done with this. And then they asked him, like, how does it feel seeing like these like bad games come out with negative reviews? And he said it's like watching your daughter do porn. Right. Uh, yeah. There you go. And that was yeah. for Crash Bandicoot. I mean, that right, was. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Leave you leave your review in our Discord, which is linked <laughs> below, and see where that conversation ends up going. Maybe it'll. Be, well, uh, <laughs> After this, uh, yeah, dark turn uh, in our conversation, let's let's get back into the the dark turns at the end of end of Catch Twenty Two. Yeah, um, which is yeah. So the the classic, it's a comedy, but we're we're gonna get serious here, folks. Right. Well, and you get dramatic payoffs to some jokes. Right. Oh yeah, and uh, one one more thing that I'll mention. Um, yeah, in terms of characters. Uh, yeah, there's a character named uh, Lieutenant, and then I think eventually Colonel and General Scheisskopf in this in this novel. Um, and um, so I think in in past episodes it has been established that yeah I know some German, so uh, so yeah the name Scheisskopf uh, 
do you know uh do you know what that what that name means Cody? no i thought it was a name yeah so scheisskopf in german means shithead um <laughs> Okay. And uh, yeah, and so that's a that's a particular character in this novel who is especially obsessed with uh, with parades and oh, just yeah. make, making sure that that the parades are done correctly. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's one more sort of you know, um, I mean he's not he's not quite as adversarial of a character as as Colonel Cathcart, but he's another sort of like um, yeah in, incompetent character that sort of progressively gets promoted up up the ladder um there's also another character uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, oh just they they also mention he's so obsessed with parades he doesn't have the time or energy to have sex with his wife that's like one of his character traits right right (laughs) (laughs) yeah and then there's a there's another character in this book named major 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 Yes, uh, and uh, and the joke there. Uh, well, yeah, and <laughs> they, 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 there's a couple of jokes associated with his character. One of them is is that he initially is not a major, but he is just a guy whose um, first, middle, and last names are all major, and basically because of that, he eventually gets promoted to being a major. And uh, when, once he is a major, he doesn't actually like seeing people. Uh, who come in to 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 uh, talk to him, and so he tells uh, the the sergeant outside, "Okay, send them in, but only when I'm gone." Mm-hmm. And so people are only able to come in to see him once he's gone. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's uh, another one of the sort of catch twenty uh, two things that that comes up uh, with with another character. Yeah, I like how that joke was portrayed in the Hulu show too, um, mm-hmm. because. I, I think it was different, but the, the two colonel leaders, whatever, they, they they say, like, we're going to the big military higher-up meeting. Where's Major, Major, Major? And he's like, it's, you know, me, but, you know, that's just my name, right? And so the in the show, it, it, the it they saw the guy's name, Major, Major, Major. So, like, oh, he's a Major, put him up. And then to avoid right. the humiliation of having to, like, admit that they made a mistake, they're like, just promote him. Just promote him to Major. Right. And then right, he's like, right. and they're like, come on, we got to go to like the meeting now. And he's just a major. Mm-hmm. Now. Right, right. Yeah. But yeah, so, um, so yeah, towards the end of the novel, yeah, things get, things get darker, but there is still humor. Um, I think another interesting example of this is, um, yeah, there is, uh, at, at one point, there's, there's a plane that goes down um, and one character, uh, yeah, yeah, one f- f- fairly major character uh, dies while in the plane. I, for, I forget which character exactly it is, but um, but basically in the in in the records, uh, the the character of the doctor, Doctor Nika, is also up in the plane, but Doctor Nika is actually is actually not in the plane. But people are actually watching the plane go down, and they're like, "Oh, and uh, do, uh, the the uh, doc is up there," and, and the doctor's like, "No, no, actually, I'm I'm uh, right here." Uh, and they're like, oh yeah, that's that's uh, that's uh, too bad. And yeah, 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 the doctors died too. And so basically, uh, the doctor is officially declared dead in the paperwork, even though he's still alive, and he's still basically trying to like convince people that he's alive. But uh, but like nobody sort of believes him because like the the paperwork trumps reality, something like that. And so that's which results in like a end credit type joke which is his wife received which it was like it was like a joke but i was also like this is kind of sad yeah 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 his his wife gets the notice and she's genuine that's like the interesting part about like you get like a genuine like character thing and then like he writes her a letter that says like hey like it's gonna say i'm dead i'm not dead and she and they talk about like the emotional turmoil that puts her through and how the military goes like if anyone wrote you that it's not him because he's dead so like we're sorry someone's messing with you we're gonna stop them from being able to send you mail and then she right. like and then it, the, the story just ends with her like just moving and then there's no forward address so the doctor just will never find his wife again i'm like oh like that it, it's like a silly joke and then it's like oh that's sad <laughs> right <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's 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 definitely yeah yeah a joke but yeah with this sort of dark yeah again kind of kafka-esque 
tone to it where it's like, yeah, somebody sort of trapped in this paradox of bureaucracy that they can't get out of. Um, another, another interesting example of that was, yeah, I think this is with the character of, of the chaplain, who is, who is another pre pretty major character in the book. And the, yeah, and the, the chaplain um, at one point is brought in and he's questioned by some people and they ask him to write something down. And, and he writes something down and then and then the people look at it and they're like, that's not your handwriting. And they show this this other thing that they have that they think he wrote. And they're like, this is this is this is actually your your uh, your your uh, your um, um, handwriting. Why didn't you write it in, in your in your own handwriting here? So basically, that's that's another instance of yeah these weird paradoxes going on. Yeah, which. Uh... Because, yeah, there's a, a couple of scenes where it's just someone's being brought to, like, the court to, like, have to answer right. for something. One of the first ones is, like, um, you said that we couldn't punish you for a crime. And he's like, no, right. I said you wouldn't find me guilty of it. And, like, why not? Why couldn't we find you? I'll do whatever I want. And then just, he has to right. argue in defense of saying that he isn't, that he's innocent. Right, um, right. Which I, I do have a friend who's in the military. Mm -hmm. And during one of their like leaves or whatever they got drunk and instead of driving home they slept in their jeep mm -hmm. which is against the rules so they had to go mm -hmm. and they had to go to court stand in that right. trial where they had to go like why weren't you at your bunker and he's like well we were drunk so we didn't couldn't drive home uh mm -hmm. and then it would and it, you they did and he said like they just ask you the same three questions for like right. four hours and wow. they're just like so you're saying you were in your jeep but you weren't in your bunker and he's like yes because i was drunk and we're not allowed to drive okay why weren't you in your bunker and then you just lose your mind eventually yeah i mean yeah to hear that there is i i, I mean obviously this book was written because there is some basis and reality to this stuff but yeah to actually hear about it is yeah pretty pretty horrifying yeah. no my friend hated it my friend Oh, yeah. I was just my friend just call and he's like, "Yeah, we don't have like rights or anything." I'm like, "Hey, that sucks." Uh, right. Yeah. So yeah, it, it all of this is barely an exaggeration. I also got a friend who worked in the military police, mm -hmm. and so and there is a scene that I also know is not an exaggeration. Uh, right. And uh, stuff like that also wasn't talked about like in culture that much about like you know military prisons and assault uh so mm -hmm. those were this was also like new topics that people weren't open to when it first came out right right i think the yeah. uh, the assault situation in the military that's like the that's i don't know how recent that is uh, but i i know it's still a hot topic right yeah the, uh, the, the the like uh sexual assault stuff yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. um because you got to be like, well, yeah. And it's like, yeah, there's like, you know, a lot of evidence you just killed that guy. And they're like, ah, we looked into it ourselves and we didn't, we didn't, we didn't say anything. You know, every, right. every authority. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, right. yeah, the, uh, we looked into it and we didn't do anything wrong. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. We, we, yeah. That's, that's another part is that, yeah, like, um, yeah, I think again, it's I think it's Lieutenant Shyskov, uh, who uh, it's described that like yeah, somebody is on trial and he's being prosecuted by Lieutenant Shyskov, and describes how, how Lieutenant Shyskov is also the person running the trial and is also <laughs> his def his defense attorney as well. Um, yeah, and so yeah, uh, there's a there's a cartoon I like called Xavier Renegade Angel. It's not for everyone. Um, yeah. But there's a bit where he he's in court and they're like, are you, are you innocent or guilty? And he says, I'm innocent. Uh, I And the, the judge says, you're not on trial for committing a crime. You're on trial for being on trial. And he <laughs> says, you know, I'm well, I'm innocent. And like by saying you're innocent, you're confirming you're on trial, which means you're right. guilty. And then he uh, right. some crazy <laughs> stuff happens. But yeah, that's yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the the classic bureaucratic humor is uh, right, right. Mm -hmm. ba basically like oh we're gonna figure out whatever technicality we can use to just do what we wanted to do anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Well, yeah, yeah. So 
yeah, I mean, as the as the novel progresses, yeah, I mean that. Yeah, the the, the jokes continue, but they kind of get less sort of you know, ha ha funny, and more just sort of like, oh, this is this is really pretty pretty messed up. Yeah, yeah as, chocolate covered as, cotton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The character of Milo Minderbinder um, buys the entire world supply of cotton and <laughs> is trying to figure out what to do with it. Yeah, and he he tries to give Yosarian yeah chocolate covered cotton and uh, yeah. So, that's, um, yeah. So characters characters die um, as as the number of missions that they need to do goes goes up further and further uh, and. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, one of the last kind of major scenes uh, in the novel involves Yosarian, yeah, in, in Rome, um, yeah, just sort of walking around and seeing all of the, all of the horrible stuff that's going on, all of the, uh, all of the basically consequences of, of the Americans having um, attacked Italy over and over again, and, um, and, at, yeah, at a certain point, yeah, yeah, what you mentioned with with this other character of uh, Arfi, uh, who is, um, yeah, a guy that rides in the plane with with Yosarian, and he, uh, Yosarian finds him and finds that Arfi has actually uh, raped a woman and then threw her out a window and killed her, uh, and yeah, and again, the, yeah, this is this is kind of you know a very dark. Uh, at this point, I even hesitate to even call it a joke, but I guess technically it, it is a joke. Yeah, where Arfi says, "Well, I raped her because I don't, I don't, I don't pay for it." Yeah, so you know, it's like, you know, this weird pride that he has for not paying prostitutes, uh, and so he decides to force himself on a woman instead. Uh, and which and is so not at this the point, joke. The joke, <laughs> right? The joke well, is coming away. Just for the, just if you're like, if that's the. Well, that's like that, that. That's like that's like a sort of dark pre -joke, pre, pre, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pre-joke to the sort of big joke, which is that yeah, uh, Yosarian is basically like, well, yeah, you, 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 uh, you killed this woman. Yeah, I mean, you, you assaulted her and then killed her. They're going to arrest you, and yeah, and so, and then the military police are coming, and and then the military police end up arresting Yosarian because he's in Rome without a permit, <laughs> uh, and so. Uh, and so basically the novel ends with Yosarian, uh, yeah, basically being questioned by the colonels and them saying, well, we'll send you home, but in order, in order for that to happen, you have to like us. <laughs> you have to basically say nice things about us. And Yosarian does not agree to that. Uh, and so it looks like he's going to be court-martialed, but then somehow he is able to escape uh, when he finds out that uh, his his roommate, who he who he thought had died, actually turned up in in Sweden, so Yosarian rushes off to uh, to find him, and uh, yeah, so that's basically how the how how how, how the how the novel ends, um, and uh, yeah, uh, any other comments well, about how it ends or you know? that um, the the final catch twenty two is right. for him is. Um, We'll set. We'll, we can send you home as long as you say that we're not. Nice, as long as you say right. you like us, and right, then right. it's like uh, when they're having that conversation because he's he's talking about it with another guy who's like, I would take that deal any second. And he's like, Well, imagine if you had principles, and the guy's like, Whew, If I right. had principles, well, mm -hmm. then I couldn't go around saying I like them. That that would that'd be terrible if I had principles, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And and actually, that that relates to another uh, joke. Uh, a sort of recurring joke where, um, yeah, Yosarian is, um, you know, obviously continually scared of going on these missions. And at one point, another soldier says, well, what if everybody thought that way? And Yosarian says, well, then I would be a damned fool to not think that way. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 And Yosarian, I, I, I actually I relate more because I relate more to the guy that was just like, I'm just going to fake my death as a relationship, <laughs> which is the, uh, because the he there's one guy who's famous for crashing every single time, right? On every mission, and he's like, "I'm practicing," and yeah. then he crashes and dies, and no one, which I didn't, but and and no one in the story makes has any sort of theories about that. But at the oh, end, what, 
Mm-hmm. Oh. But yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think that's the character. Yeah, yeah. There was another great line where it's like, uh, yeah, I think that's Clevenger, and it's like Clevenger was dead. That was the flaw in his philosophy. <laughs> I mean, it's a funny book. I, like, it's I funny. Mean, yeah, yeah. It's especially rehearing details. Uh, I laugh more hearing it again than I did like right. the first, like going through it. I'm more of like, that's pretty funny, and I want to tell someone this joke. Yeah, but it, it it's funnier when I hear it out loud. Um, right. like said out like without the context and everything. Right, right. Yeah. So I think to sort of like yeah sum up our sort of overall th- feelings about this book. Yeah, I think we both kind of like this book uh we like certain things about it i yeah i I mean this is a weird thing to say but i feel like this would be a great book to reread you know after you've already read it once i think it's i think it would be fun to reread it but it's it's a difficult book to get through the first time because it's kind of unclear like okay what's going on what am i supposed to be getting out of this who is who, who are all these different characters but once you've gone through it and you sort of have a sense of what it's about, then you can kind of read it through again and actually enjoy it. So that's yeah. a, a great, cause that, that, that was the issue. Cause like by the first chapter, I'm like, I'm hoping I know what the point of the story is, <laughs> Right. <laughs> but in this, especially cause it jumps around, I'm like, Oh, so that wasn't even the main character. That was just the first guy that we saw. And right. then I go like, Oh no, that was the main character. We just took a mm-hmm. little detour to get to know everyone else who's in this military base before we get back to them. Right, and right. then when it ended, I was in like by the midway point. I'm kind of like, uh, this is I don't know if this is for me. Like, I kind of yeah. <laughs> it's funny, you know, but like I don't the 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 repetition kind of gets to me sometimes. And then yeah. when it finished, I was like, I'm really happy I finished that book. Yeah, uh, yeah, me too, me too. Yeah. So especially be- because of the last joke, which I almost don't even want to talk because I'm like that. That's it is like the the big appeal but there the the final mm-hmm. kind of returning bit is there is a character who blames Yosarian for one of his crewmates deaths right and they then proceed to show up throughout the story in disguises mm-hmm. attempting to assassinate him right and it is cartoony to the point where he flies to rome and when he lands that person is waiting for him in mechanic gear to chase right. him and right, i thought right. that was like the the cartoony like the way that like they reveal themselves and like how it's like that's physically impossible this can't be i thought that was hilarious Mm -hmm. and i loved it and it that joke keeps happening and i was like i i finished it because and it ends on that joke too where it's just like oh it's them again and i uh, i was just like that was neat i like that Uh, you know it was kind of uh it's not something there are books that i'm like I just want, I can binge through this all day and I will just consume the, and absorb the story all in one go. Catch 22 right. is not one of those stories. It is one where it's like, you need to view it as a mini series and divide it up and just yeah, uh, definitely kind of recover from the repetition. So, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Cause it, yeah, that joke you mentioned. Yeah. So uh, this, can kind of lead into our discussion a little bit of the 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 adaptations of Catch Twenty Two. Yeah, so there, there so so there was a movie of Catch Twenty Two that came out in nineteen seventy, and in that movie, um, yeah, that that's actually like the first scene of the movie is, uh, yeah, Yosarian walking around and and then he gets stabbed uh, by by an unidentified person, and then then that doesn't sort of get explained and paid off until the very end of the movie. Uh, which is which was structurally interesting. I thought. Yeah, I don't agree with but, it. I I don't I don't think they should because I mean if it was a drama, right. But then it's right. like the story then becomes like oh we're all building up to finding out why he was stabbed. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I mean it's interesting. Yeah, because yeah, these adaptations. Yeah, I mean this book is. Uh, you know, I mean if you if you read through it. Um, I mean, I, I mean, it definitely is, you know, something that on the one hand, it makes sense to, to make into some sort of adaptation, but on the other hand, you have to do a lot of work to kind of figure out how to actually do it. And so, yeah. Yeah. And so this movie, uh, yeah, takes one approach of, 
Yeah, and I mean it's and it's just it's just a two hour movie, and I mean and this this book is four hundred and fifty pages, and so you know I mean there's I mean there's no way that a movie can encompass everything. Uh, although the movie the movie does uh, a lot, I think, and I think that the yeah yeah the movie is okay but not great. Um, I think the most impressive thing about the movie is just its its cast and uh, and a sort of like uh, it's it's a sort of snapshot uh, bless you of um, of of sort of like what was going on in sort of American comedy at the time because yeah the movie the movie was directed by Mike Nichols and the screenplay was by Buck Henry and you know if if you know anything about the history of American comedy those are those are big big names and uh uh alan arkin uh is uh plays plays yosarian and there's a lot of other uh yeah uh, bob newhart is in the movie he plays major major um anthony perkins <laughs> norman bates from from psycho is oh. is in it uh, yeah yeah he, he plays the chaplain um john voight plays milo mindabinder um and uh uh martin balsam who's a well-known uh actor from back in the day he, play, he plays colonel cathcart uh and um uh charles groden is in the movie too i, I mean like yeah again you know if you're if you're into you know older classic movies it's it's really a sort of all-star cast i mean it's 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 a pretty a pretty impressive cast of people but in terms of the way that it, it kind of deals with the the story itself it's it's flawed <laughs> Yeah, I didn't, I, uh, like, watching it, I'm like, I don't, I'm not, like, I, I don't know also if, like, I'm just not connected to the story enough to be upset when they mm -hmm. do different things, mm -hmm. but it, it, it just felt like it, it just wasn't, um, be, like, trying to be funny. Yeah. Which, yeah, which yeah. also, because like in, in the Hulu sh series, I, I would say that they, they kind of removed the laugh track from the story, right. where um, it's the same story, but like the stuff where you're like, you're going through and you're like, oh, that's like, that's pretty funny. It, right. They play it much more seriously. And they also hmm. focus more on the war and they focus more on death and like the battle, which I... Right. Like in the book, I'm like, I don't, I'm pretty sure they would always just mention that they were like flying planes. Right. They didn't, the story didn't focus a lot on like how it actually works and like what they did. And they added a lot more dramatic music and stuff. But the, the movie mm -hmm. felt like, um, wh like, where does this fit? Is this trying to go into this? Is this focusing a lot on the satire or the comedy or like just trying to, tell the story or trying to make it in a movie format right yeah yeah so that so that movie is 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 okay but not great but yeah so uh it sounds like um have you have you have you watched all of the uh hulu miniseries yeah i watched okay, the movie yeah. and then i i just i just finished the hulu series okay yeah yeah i've only had a chance to watch the first episode of the of the hulu series but yeah i can already tell that it's it's it seems to be a much much better adaptation in many ways um it's uh yeah and i think that yeah again as as you mentioned yeah i think a sort of limited miniseries is a much better way to kind of approach uh this book yeah because yeah again it's a lot of these kind of interconnected episodes and it's 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 pretty big and uh yeah and I, yeah yeah as, as you mentioned yeah yeah the book yeah, all of the sort of horror of war is kind of in the very distant background at the beginning of the book and sort of comes comes to the fore uh, towards the end. Whereas, yeah, yeah, and yeah, definitely in uh, the first episode of the series, yeah, you already see a lot more of that. But uh, yeah, the the sort of way things are told in the book is is very much rearranged in the in the mini series. But in most cases, for for reasons that it seemed to make sense and um and should mention that yeah uh george clooney is in the miniseries he plays Scheisskopf. uh and and that scene that scene that you mentioned with yeah the yeah uh read back the last thing i said yeah that's that's portrayed in the in the first episode i think pretty 
pretty uh, well, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, the movie and the show, they both pick different ways to start it. And the movie starts right. with the, um, with, you know, if you were like, well, if we got it, this is like the best joke in the movies or in the story. So let's like, we're going to open with that. Right. And then the show starts with like I think it's you, Sarah, and I, I I honestly have a hard time telling them apart, like any of the yeah. characters. But like walking naked, covered in blood, while like everyone's right. just going about their business. I'm like, that's I, I like that opening more. Um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but and it's also like much more dramatic at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And uh because there's a there's a scene in the book where a character accidentally kills someone else, and it's told yep from the perspective of the people who are watching it so it's like it's still like a tragedy right, um, right. and the series focuses more on the on the on the guy who does it by accident and the acting i was actually like this is really good I'm like uh mm-hmm. like i'm like which is also why it's not as funny because they're all acting like this is real and like right. so you get realistic reactions i'm like oh yeah this is just horrifying and like you really mm-hmm. get like uh it it does that thing where you know a book will give you a paragraph of context and then right. the the character only said one line so like now it's the actor's job to like convey all right. of that context through mm-hmm. acting and like the guy did it like that the entire journey of the character I'm like oh I like knowing the book I know that this that's exactly he's acting exactly like how the book said he would right yeah yeah and that's it that scene in the movie is really seems to be played almost purely for laughs yeah because it's like yeah even the way it's done like it's clearly a you know dummy that just gets yeah cut and cut in half and stuff and yeah so yeah yeah. in in the movie well yeah it's it's like a whimsical dark comedy and in in the series there's no humor in it in the series it is completely Mm -hmm. like everyone's just oh my god horrified right and uh and it's like nothing changed they didn't change the story all they right. did was change it to where it's just showing the consequences a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like for like adapting it, like, I don't think they did it different. They didn't adapt it differently because mm-hmm. all of the events are still happening, but they're, right. they're just not playing up the comedy of it. Right. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So. I also. It's 22. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, no. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I was also like watching this show. Uh-huh. Yeah. Watching this show, I'm like, I would have rather done this than uh do the book. Knowing that this is pretty accurate, yeah. I was like, yeah, this like this is the format, especially for enjoying this kind of story. So I'm like, yeah, I would have rather done this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I I actually looked up some reviews online, like some other YouTube people, and yeah, there was there was one woman who actually hated the book and and was was sort of like didn't even understand how it had gotten published in the first place uh and and thought that the hulu series just took the best episodes from from the book and yeah it was was much better so yeah <laughs> i mean yeah i i would uh i did, i mean you you just miss out on the some of the satires right yeah. which is the other thing is that they're kind of two different stories so you if you like the show i mean check out the book it's funnier Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah 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 so you know catch 22 yeah it's i can understand why it's considered a classic american novel um because it definitely speaks to yeah a, yeah certain issues that that takes place in the military and the sort of overall absurdity of war but it's not an easy read uh so you know if you if you don't like challenges in your reading, then then don't read it. But if you do, yeah, maybe it's something you you want to check out. Yeah, yeah. and four hundred uh, pages, not that long. It's, I will say, it's 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 verging on a long novel, but it's it's not quite there. Yeah, yeah. it felt longer than four hundred pages. Yeah, <laughs> at times, I, at times it does. Yeah, I'm yeah. not unhappy with it. I enjoyed my time with it, but I was also like, yeah. okay, I, I'm done now. I'm I'm happy I did that. I don't know if I'll re-listen to it. I was excited to see adaptions of it, but right. it it has a length to it, a, 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 a heftiness that you yeah. that was completely surprising to me. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, I try to I try to take no more than a week to get through uh, most novels. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, and I was able to read this in a week, but yeah, I, I had to just, okay, every day sit down and read, yeah, 50 to 60 pages and, you know, just kind of plow through it that way. And, and so, yeah, and some days it was definitely uh, more challenging than others. Yeah, yeah, so some days there's, there, there's some very breezy, fun parts of this book, mm -hmm. but they're encapsulated within a lot of other more challenging parts, yeah. Yeah, uh, this is some 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 something I do is I like is I'll um interchange books I'm listening to with books I've like enjoyed in mm -hmm. the past, and I'll just like I'll just swap them out sometimes. And I was doing that a lot for Catch Twenty Two. I was, I was right. um, yeah. so I've I've listened to Heroes Die now twenty two times, and I was listening oh. to that book as sort of like a uh, palate cleanser for me. Uh, uh huh. I didn't hate it as much as some books I usually use that system for. I didn't hate it at all, actually. But it was just like, a, I'm I'm kind of, I'm bored, not in a bad way, but in a way where it's like, I just want a different story for a bit. Sure. Yeah. Fatigue. Right. This is this is why I don't like doing ra like number rating systems, because it's like, what would I rate at it? Because I'm like, oh, I think it was great. I just have a lot of issues with it. I just, I, but I, I think it's a great book. Yeah. B, B plus. How about that? Yeah. You know what? B, way more than a C, and that's all you need. So. Right. Yeah. Would it be an A? I mean, an A, an a would be something where there's a lot of books where when I finish it, I'm like, <gasps> you know, oh, I've, I've learned some new thing about like mm -hmm. existence or like, oh, I've been given a window into someone's mind and now I understand. Um, I finished this being like that was that was good that was that was a fun it's like in a movie where you go like right. all right that was good all right I'm done yeah, yeah. and you're like well I watch that again maybe I might see this movie if it's on TV right right yeah I mean an A would be a book where it's like oh I can't wait to get back to reading that again that's that's my my real metric for if I like a story is because there there's a lot of times that happens where I'm like. I am going to re-listen to this now because it's essentially going to be a different story because it was so good. Now that I know all these right. things, when you go through it again, you're like, Oh, this, 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 and this. And you're like, this, it's even more mentally stimulating. Yeah. Uh, and those are my A pluses. Right. But okay. I think we're tail spinning uh, towards our inevitable demise. That's right. <laughs> so how are duncan what's the outro oh but real quick uh nightlands mm -hmm. is next week i think the nightland I think the nightland right. okay it was my <laughs> pick I, I don't remember that but, <laughs> uh uh and just uh did you decide on how you were going to try to read that story because there's two different versions of that story yeah and i have both of them uh, oh, they're, okay. I mean, they're both they're both easily available on on Kindle. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I haven't decided yet. Okay, but you know, um, we're often we're often faced with decisions in our life, and uh, you know, in order to make a decision, you first have to make a decision of what that decision is going to be. But in order to that, you first have to make another decision in order to do that. And uh, but 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 then you have to get the necessary information to do that. But you can't get the necessary information until you've made the decision already. And so basically, uh, you know, when, when you get that information, then you'll be able to make that decision. But that requires more information. And basically, so, you know, I'm hoping that the music will just be fading out. It's, as it's I, been as fading out for a while. We've been fading out. <laughs>